Alrighty guys, uh, thanks for joining me. This is your host ID Jester. We're going to be opening the box. Brand new game here. We got just the other day. This of course is the Dark Summer Normandy 1944. D-Day and the Battle for Normandy June 6th to August 21st by Ted Racer. Produced by GMT Games. So on June 6, 1944, the Western Allies landed in Normandy and after bloody fighting, gained a lodgment in Nazi-occupied France. It took three months of vicious fighting before the Allies finally wore down the German forces and broke out and overran France. The Dark Summer, summer uh, Normandy 1944 is the latest of Ted, Ed, Ted S. Racers World War II operational series that began with the Dark Valley the East Front Campaign, 1941 to 45. The game uses a chip pull activation system that determines both the order and type of each side's actions during the game's 10 action packed turns. The unknown activation sequence means that neither player can take anything for granted. The Dark Summer covers the entire battle from June 6th to August 21st. Victory is determined by the Allies capturing Cherbourg. Exiting units to Brittany and Paris, and preventing the exiting of German units. Players can also win a sudden death victory if they achieve remarkable success before the end of the game. The Dark Summer is a game of moderate complexity, but nevertheless covers all the important elements of the campaign. There are rules for the D Day landings, Bocage terrain, untried units, air support, naval support, carpet bombing, assault guns. Allied artillery superiority, U.S. tank destroyers, the German Nufferwaffers, Nubelwaffers, and flak guns. A game on the epic campaign that is playable in a single day's gaming and with a small footprint that only allows it to be left set up for study. The Dark Summer Normandy 44 is a must-have for fans of World War II operational games or students of the campaign of Northwest Europe. Uh, there is uh, one to two players, four hours, complexity five out of nine, suited, solitaire suitability seven out of nine, ages 14 and above. All right, let's uh, open the box and see what is inside the box. Come on. There you go. Let's see. Just got this in with my last shipment from GMT. So... Opening the box, hey? All right, see what we have. So we have a playbook with a picture of Field Commander Rommel there. I know uh, Tony's Board Life and Rough Swordsman probably don't know what that is. That's or what they should do to that. Example, extended example of play. So, pretty in-depth ex explanations on how to play the game with different uh, different explanations, different pictures, detailed explanations. That's cool. And, of course, designer notes, copy of the counter sheets, which is always nice, and, of course, an index. Very uh, short. It's only uh, like uh, 14 pages or so. So that's nice. The Dark Summer Normandy 1944 Rules of Play. The introduction, the components. Uh, information about the different counters and the uh, information on all the different uh, meanings on the counters. Terms and abbreviations. Setup and victory. Sequence of play, stacking. A player may stack up to four combat units in a single hex, but no more than one division may be present per hex. Uh, zones of control. Negating zones of control. Weather. Reinforcements and replacements. Action rounds. Movement. Combat. Uh, 
uh, first allied first and second wave rounds. Point to Hawk. Strong points and OST battalions. Sherbird combat, bocage, and cities. Combat support markers. Supply. Units out of supply. Attrition. Allied optional boundaries. And general rule reminders and D Day reminders. We have a copy of the charts, combat result charts, the Cherbourg combat table, the weather effects and movement in combat. Two sided with terrain on the other side. Movement cost, combat effects, and any notes, and of course, information. And it looks like there is two copies of that. There's a second player eight card. Activation chit availability table. So what you uh, what chits can go in the cup depending on the weather. Reinforcement table. I'm sorry, replacement tables. Your sequence of play rebuilding unit tables. On the back we have the general rule reminders. Allied sudden death victory. German sudden death victory. Allied victory point table and the German victory point table. Then we have a counter sheet. A oh, good thick size counters, which I'm happy about. That's nice. This is, of course, sheet number one. And I will let you take a look at the counters here so you can see them. American and Commonwealth. All right, and of course, our second sheet this is going to have the German. Uh, looks like some fortifications here. So once again, let's see. Look at the what the counters look like. All right, and we have us a map, a six-sided die, and a completely worthless, completely worthless insert tab. There's nothing to really put underneath. It does look cool, but of course they got to hold that for a stupid die. And the die isn't even that good to begin with. just a regular rounded let's see if it rolls high or low it rolls low too uh oh don't let Tony near this dice don't let Tony near that dice let's throw that out as we don't need it and let's take a look at the map let's look at the size of the map hopefully it won't be too big Let's uh, spin it around. It mostly fits on my table. Mostly. Mostly. Try and get all this other stuff out of the way here so I can really. Lay it somewhat flat. So you got the Cherbourg box in here. Here is going to be uh, Utah, Point to Hawk, Normandy, or um, Almaha, then Gold, Juno, Sword Beaches, and the surrounding terrain. Very familiar. Most uh, Normandy maps will have the extension that goes all the way up. This one just cuts it off there. And then you have a box, I believe, where the uh, 
where the German Cherbourg units go and then anyone that's assaulting them that place would go there slide it down so you can see a little bit better uh, you got first wave second wave third wave okay you got a uh, Eastern exit box for German and allied units all the way over here Uh, you got a terrain chart here. You got some allied action round track, turn record track, victory point track, and current weather track. You also have a Brittany box down here in the bottom. If I can fold this up a little bit. The Brittany box, U.S. units only. May leave, just entered. There you go. Got the uh, Boyer, Khan, the Rhodes. Uh, here is that line that's supposed to separate the American side from the um, Commonwealth side. Nice looking map, pretty uh, usable, pretty doable. Same though. Cool. All right. I guess uh, that's pretty doable, pretty easy. Fits on the table. And I actually got some plexiglass now instead of using glass. Uh, let's see how well these counters come out of the counter trip, out of the, uh, the counter holder. Where's my, here it is. See how well these come out. Hoping they come out pretty easily. They seem to be a little bit thicker counters, which is nice. I can't stand thin counters. Let's see. <clears throat> Gotta be careful. I don't just cut off one of the counters. That would be, that'd make me sad. I haven't checked to see if there's any errata online about this game yet, since I just got it and all. And of course, It'll be counter clipping time, counter clipping time. Oh, everyone, grab your counter clippers and let's clip, 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 all night long, all night long, all night long. They seem to come off pretty easy. This is good. You see, I can just kind of punch right through the. The sheet and it's only two counter sheets thank God one of my favorite things to do is clip the counters I know it is a passage of a, a birthright that all Americans I think it's part of the Constitution in fact I'm pretty sure that part of the Constitution says all man shall be created equal and be able to clip counters from their counter sheets. So say we all. So uh, that is a sheet. Uh, I'm gonna have to find my clippers now. two and a half inch or, or two and a half whatever millimeters centimeters whatever the hell they are it's a two and a half look at that a perfectly clipped counter 
No. Beautiful job. I did. I just. I just did a pretty. I, I must say, I did a pretty good job on that one, didn't I? I must say. So. Yeah. I will just clip some counters here. Does anyone have anything to say? Anyone play this game yet? Try it out. I haven't looked to see. I might. Uh, I was just going to live stream for a little while and see if anyone is online wants to come chat while I clip counters. Um, I haven't looked to see if there's any uh, playthroughs or anything of this yet. Damn. Seriously. I'm going to have to glue that back on because, wow. Ugh. Sometimes I just don't know. Sometimes I do. Come on now. Well, I glue my finger right to it, too. Watch Jester glue his finger to the. Let's hope not. Sometimes, I mean, sometimes, mm, just makes you go, what? Sometimes they just go in so good, and then you can just clip the edges, and there's no problems, and everything's hunky-dory. And then other times, you go to put it in, and it grabs that back side of the counter and rips it off. That's, I guess, the only problem with the thicker counters is that there's a big, better chance for it to grab the back. Well, maybe I'll go online and see if anyone's done a playthrough or rules explanation or whatever. I mean, it's pretty standard stuff. You got your supply. You have your uh, zones of control and all your special rules for the Normandy landings, I'm sure. The chip pull system is interesting with the fact that uh, I think this is the first Normandy game I have that has a chip pull system. I'm not sure uh, my feelings on chip pull systems. I guess it's okay. Damn. That's a blank one. Yeah, I guess I'll do the blank one too. In case you have to do any replacement counters. Alrighty, well, that was the fun and excitement of. Where's my box? Here it is. The Dark Summer. Normandy 44. D Day in the Battle for Normandy, June 6th, August 44. Um. I will look at and will read the sequence of play as I cut out counters for those of you that are interested. This one's going to be a problem shit too, I bet. So you have the turn marker activation phase. You then have the weather phase. The weather phase, you're going to draw a weather chit. 
at random to determine the turn's weather. Place it on the turn track and mark the weather of the current weather track. Place it on, okay, <laughs> it's kind of a redundant. Place it, place it on the turn track and mark the weather on the current weather track. All right, so that is phase number two. Phase number three is the replacement phase. Consult the replacement turn to see the number and the type of replacements received this turn. First the Allied player, then the German player. Spends reinforcements, I'm sorry, replacements, to bring in replacement units back up to full strength. Unused replacements are lost. And we have the action phase. Consult the action chit availability table to see how many action chits are available this turn. The Allied player chooses his initiative chit, places the other excluding German reaction chits in the action cup. You following along with me? Good. Uh, in the first round, the Allied player is the active player and plays his initiative chit. In subsequent rounds, draw a chit at random from the action cup. The owner of the chit becomes the active player and plays it and plays it to the action round track. After each allied round, the German player has the option to play a reaction chit, if available. On turn one, the allied player does not choose an initiative chit, and the sequence of chits for the first four rounds is fixed. Okay. Number five is the attrition phase. Check units and supply. The German player does this every turn. The allied player does this only on rain and storm turns. Units that are out of supply lose a step. And you have the cleanup phase. Move units in the just entered section of the Brittany box to the may leave section. Remove action chits. Uh, combine action markers and prepared offensive markers from the action round track. Reinforcements that fail to enter may be placed on the turn record track in the space for the next turn. Number seven, victory check phase. That is gonna be, check to see if any victory points have been gained this turn. On turn 10, if neither player has won a sudden deck victory, determine the winner on victory points. All right, that is your seven sequence of play for the dark summer. Turn marker activation phase, the weather phase. Uh, I'm not gonna do that shit. The replacement phase, the action phase, the attrition phase, the cleanup phase, and the victory check phase. Uh, you know what, I'm not doing any of these. All right, well, I will see everyone next time. So uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you uh, hopefully soon. Till then, take care, guys. Enjoy the dark summer. Oh, this one's going to be a problem. Well, maybe. Yeah, we'll see. All right, guys, take care. See you next time. Thanks for watching.